I didn't hear what she was saying, but maybe she said that I'm not going to talk about football, but about skating. Uh, I'm from Holland. I'm uh, Eric Bakker. I'm the executive director of the Melkweg in Amsterdam, which is one of the oldest multidisciplinary centers in Europe. But I'm here mainly because I'm also the president of uh, Trenchard Hall, and it is a network of cultural centers from all over Europe. And it is a Porsche name, uh, president, but it is because it originated in Brussels in the French part, and I think the French like the word president above the chair. <coughs> As you see on the screen, there is this picture of a um, um, marketplace which stood empty in the 70s and was occupied by, it's in Brussels, and it was occupied by a person named Philippe Grandbeer. And he, just like some other centers in Northwestern European countries, were coming from the anti-establishment age of the 60s. As I can tell you, it's mainly a Northwestern European thing. And so they did not want, as artists or uh, cultural uh, entrepreneurs, starting a museum or a regular theater or a concert hall, they wanted to do different things at different times uh, through each other in special places and they found them in these empty standing buildings like this one. But coming from this endless fear of anti-establishment and then having a building which did at that time not look so good, it was run down, it was used as a parking space. Um, you need the authorities to try to renovate the building and you also want some money from the city to do uh, cultural activities. So that was very hard. And he decided to look around in Europe whether he was not the only one who faced these problems. And he came across some seven other centers in Sweden, Denmark, the Netherlands, Germany, France and Switzerland as you can see, highly developed countries, where similar projects had started over the years, also coming from the 60s, 70s. And they got together in 1983 in Brussels to talk over their specific problems they had in dealing with these old buildings and wanted to do several things. And it turned out that um, they decided to come together regularly and I can tell you the first phase of this network was mainly about talking about the trouble you have with an old building and no money and trying to do a lot of interesting things. It was very hard. Um, and also you must maybe realize that, that this was before uh, we all went on the internet and to YouTube and now we know immediately where things are happening more or less. But at that time you really had to buy a train ticket and go to places, don't find anything, or if you're lucky you found something, and then you could get together and then you could elaborate on your problems and you could enlarge the network, which was happening at the time. Um, but what happened also is that if you, if you have a tree and you have fruit, there are always people who try to get fruit only but don't want to water the tree. So we contracted also as a network, many centers that were interested to get out of it a lot, but not to put in a lot. And so in the second phase of the network, about in the 90s, there were huge discussions on which direction this network should take. Should we uh, organize a lot of activities together? Should we have a role in neighborhoods? Should we uh, only talk about the financial and building problems? This meant uh, a shake-up of uh, who was really interested and who was not so much. And fortunately, at the same time, when the wall went down in Berlin in 89, many centers in the eastern parts of Europe were really on the threshold of also starting these kinds of activities. And um, so in the, in the end of the 90s, we already got uh, centers from Serbia, from Hungary, from the Baltic states, from Romania, from former Eastern Germany. So the network became more varied. It was not only a rich Western European network anymore. And to give you a few examples of what we have in our network at the moment, we've got 51 
one event which is just too much to show. I can show you a few and tell you where uh, they had their original source from. This is a uh, originally the shoe factory in uh, Bordeaux, France, TNT. This is a huge beer brewery in Norway. I would never buy it. Norway beer, it's too expensive. But, and they turned it into a huge place for uh, artist residencies and theater concert. This is a 16th century fortress in Leipzig, in Germany, which is, this is open, but it, the main part of it is underground. So you've got all these so-called cellars where things are happening. Craving for daylight sometimes, but it's very, very nice place. This is also a former brewery in the eastern part of England. England. It's called Farm and Maltings. It was actually saved by the whole town of uh, this, this, this brewery as the authorities wanted to turn it down. A huge battle. This is in Moscow. It's uh, still running paper factory, paper mill, but parts of it are not in use anymore. And the director, this woman, decided to have there several galleries and there's also a contemporary dance agency located in this building. This is a small train station in Slovakia, in the town of Zhina. Uh, and it's still operated. The, the train stops a few times a day, but you can't buy tickets there anymore. It's a very small center, maybe for a uh, gallery and uh, foreign arts. This is in Bremen, Germany. It's a former slaughterhouse. They have kept it in Schlachthof in Germany, which you see more often in centers in our network that they pay tribute to the past and keep the name of what it originally was. This is in Vienna, Austria. It's the inner part, it's a huge complex. This is the port, and it used to be a repair place for locomotives, trains. This is in Finland, a factory where they made uh, textile, especially felt, that can be translated. You can see the different colors, which also pay tribute to the different kinds of colors you had in textile in the past. This is a former bakery for the army in uh, Maribor, Slovenia. Threatened many, many times, but maybe also thanks to huge protests from the other centers within the network, the authorities decided to uh, keep it and are now negotiating the renovation. Oops. This is the inner part of one of the biggest complexes in the network. It's the former factory in Helsinki where they made the huge uh, communication cables that, that were put down in the Atlantic Ocean. There were cables of 100 meters long, so the hole where these cables were built, the sea cable hole, is itself 120 meters long, so you can imagine what kind of shows the activities and performances you can do. This is a former social club of workers of the factory in Paris, which is now an artist in residency place mainly for rehearsal rooms. They've got an illegal African family living there. This is a former stone character from Russia that stopped in the Danube in Budapest, Hungary, and was turned into a cultural center. And they are now having a second row. This is an, a new building. It used to be old, it's expanded. It's in Cambridge, it's called the Junction. The Junction that means that all kinds of streets come together. It's in the middle of a traffic area. It can be desolated. This is my place in Amsterdam, which is originally from the 19th century, a warehouse for sugar, and it turned into a dairy, a milk factory in the 30s before we started. This is uh, also in Slovenia, in Ljubljana, forming army barracks of the Yugoslav army. Quite a rough place. 
This is in Warsaw. It's the Fabrica Tugini. It's a former, maybe you know it, it's a, a place where they produce the Polish rubber shoes, Pepegi, I think it's called. And uh, they also turned into a cultural place, maybe for young people. This is a new place, E16, very close to Amsterdam in, in Holland, maybe a pop venue and a multimedia center. So, this gives you an impression of what we have in our network. The network as an organization is run by an office in Sweden. There is the uh, Secretary General, Birgitta Persson, who is doing the daily work, who applies for the grants. We are granted by the European Commission, but also by uh, Scandinavian funds. And she is assisted by a marketing manager and office manager. So there are, I say, two and a half full-time people working for this network. And there is a uh, a board, an executive committee of eight people who make the, say, who are responsible, make the decisions. But all the important decisions in the network on the way we are heading, or if we are going to ask for a bank, or who can become a new member, or may become a friend, all these decisions are made by the members themselves. Each center has one vote, whether you're in big or small. And these decisions are made at the General Assembly, which we have twice a year at our meetings. So that has improved really uh, over, over the years. Apart from these meetings, which have a cultural aspect, but over the years now we have focused more and more on how can we take care that each center stays able let's say, sustainable, to go on in the future, to, to do the things they want to do. Uh, there are many, many examples of centers in Europe, apart from our network, who, who did not make it in the end, because they could not relate with uh, authorities, or they started very, very enthusiastically, usually an artist, and as you can understand, not all artists are good managers, so there comes in these organizations a point where everybody is waiting for what's going to happen next. Nobody takes initiative anymore and these places, they more or less disappear. I can also say that from the seven founding centers of Trench Hall in 1983, only two, this one you see behind me, and my own place in Amsterdam, are the only two left in the, in the network. So that, that means something that it's difficult if you get together and to keep together. So what we have decided to do is to work more and more, not only on the artistic uh, side of our uh, work, but to try to improve on our professional work and on mobility. That is to say that we have found money folders about that. It's called Changing Room. We have found money to have a two-year project running in Europe where many people who work in our places can go to other cities and towns all over Europe and get ideas and experiences of how things are operated differently so that you can share what you, what you already uh, are, are doing but that you can, can add to it and do things on a higher level to take care of a firm base to build on. It's um, a project that we are trying to continue for the next three years. It's again uh, a big grant we have to apply for in Europe, but it's, uh, it's worthwhile. And the experiences we get back from these people are, are very good. Maybe it's good that I have to show the other pictures behind me. You can get an idea of um, how meetings take place. This is the uh, slide. 